so basically what you're saying is that you haven't deconstructed <laughs> yeah no I, I definitely <laughs> not deconstructed but i'm always happy to talk about deconstruction whenever, whenever you want to I'm <laughs> so um the the host of labeled uh he's the guitarist for the band emory and uh he oh i didn't he recently, realize that yeah and he he had hmm. the bad christian podcast if you remember that i don't think it oh, exists anymore okay um and uh matt oh totally lost his last name anyways um he he recently s- s- was talking about how he deconstructed and then i've noticed a theme lately in a lot of their episodes where like i they had aaron sprinkle on this last week who is like a just really like important producer within like tooth and nail records and all that stuff do you know who aaron sprinkle is yeah oh uh, yes of yeah. course so then he's kind of saying the same things like deconstructing all this and it's i've noticed a theme recently and i've just been like come on like it's just annoys the heck out of me and uh you know they're saying stuff like oh it's so freeing you know i can just you i can be free and like talk about these things and you know and and uh i can I can look at the things of Bible of the Bible and, you know, appreciate the good things that Jesus said and just and I'm just like, oh, my goodness gracious. You guys like have just become meaningless. You know, they just have and you can get obviously they have no no objective standard anymore. It's just, well, yeah, some things Jesus said were really cool and really great. And, you know, and I can love people. But, you know, I'm, that's stuff about like homosexuality or whatever, you know, like whatever it is, whatever flavor of jesus that they don't like (laughs) they can just say well i've deconstructed so i don't need to hold to that anymore well john i actually have a question um that that kind of brings up uh probably most people who are listening right now have not lived extended periods of time on the road and then like been home so obviously your experience is not what everyone's is going to be, but what does like discipleship and church attendance and stuff look like when you're out, when you're like not in one place? Sure, sure. Well, maybe I could tie, I might tie that question in a little bit with what Luke was saying. Right. Um, but, but I want to, before I do, I should be clear that I don't know Aaron Sprinkle. I, I know who Aaron Sprinkle yeah, is, yeah. of course, because right. yeah. Nail was so big. So, I have some things to say about that, but they are not out of personal sure, knowledge. Okay. Sure. And they are huge generalizations, except that you're, you're saying you listen to something yeah. and you're specific. But I think last time I was on apology radio, I believe we talked about this Luke. And I was saying that when I was first coming into the Christian market, yeah. that I had that experience where I met a lot of Christian rock bands or not just, I shouldn't say Christian rock, Christian bands, yes. contemporary rock, whatever. And I did notice that there really wasn't, there really was not an excitement about the idea of living your faith for Christ. Maybe in theology, we, we might want to call that lordship or holy living, sanctification, whatever you want to call it. There wasn't an excitement that Jesus Christ not only saved me, but he gave me a brand new heart. And now my job is to live by his laws. Mm -hmm. That's my job. And that's not only my job, that's what I want because the Holy Spirit has come in my heart and the Holy Spirit not only gives me the capability to live by his laws, but it gives me a desire to love what he loves and to hate what he hates. That was not evident in, in Christian music. And so as a huge generalization, as you say, what you just said about that movement of tooth and nail, that's just not surprising because a lot of what, in general, a lot of what those bands were clearly all about, even when I met them, they were always supportive of, of basically moral anarchy. They they were never, they were never interested. uh, Again, it's a huge generalization. No, I understand. Yeah. A lot of them were never interested in being, I want to live by the law of God and that, and that's what is good. So what you have basically is, is are basically a lot of people who believe in God Mm -hmm. and and they believe that they need a savior, whether that is literal or not, they, they need something to lift them up. You know what I mean? I need something to get me in a better place. Maybe not a savior to literally atone for the sins in my life that have earned me the wrath of God. So that it's kind of like one of the reasons I think the church is here, as you just said, the football team that's fighting, fighting itself right now, which is, it's amazing to me to see so many Christians 
on the wrong side of what is happening yeah. in, in, in our earth right now. To see Christians actively promoting church closures because of COVID, actively right. promoting segregation in churches for whoever has a vaccine. What's wrong with these people? Right. Christians actively promoting rioting, actively promoting burning things down because the Rittenhouse trial doesn't go the way they want it. As you see this happening, what you, I think what is really bringing up um, it, it, it is, is this distinction of who believes in the law of God and who just believes in general that God is real? Because mm -hmm. those are two different things, man. So I, I think that that's important. And when I look at, at Skillet, to go to the question that Joy is asking, I think that what Skillet has had that is really, truly wonderful and that I, I try to talk about all the time is that Skillet is a part of an, a church, like a local expression of the body of Christ that we call a church, if that's the right word. And I have leaders in my life. I have spiritual authority in my life. And I have elders and pastors and brothers and sisters. And we're not just an island going to do our own thing. Right. Um, spreading, <laughs> what's the word? Spreading positivity. I put that in air quotes. Yeah. Not just spreading a positive message about a God who loves people. It, it's more than a positive message. It's the truth of Christ. Yes, who loves people and wants to redeem you that you would repent and be born again. Yeah. So I think that that is big. What church looks like for skill on the road. It, it, I will say when we're on the road, it is not, it is not, um, it's not like every Sunday we go to a church right. when we first started touring, we would go to a church on the road because it felt like the right thing to do, but it just didn't work <laughs> for lots of reasons, which I won't say. So we did begin sometimes having our own church, if you will, we would, you know, sing songs together, especially when my kids were little, we'd worship together and we would talk about scripture or this that, and the other. Now it's more of an issue of we can, because of the internet, we can watch, mm. I can watch my own church online if I want to, you know, so we didn't have that sort of streaming available all those years ago, but now we do. And so now there's so much great uh, uh, information, teaching, theology, my own church will stream online. We can do worship together as a family or, or as a band online things like that. But I think one of the things that Skillet had going for us different was that we had a passion. We had a passion, not just for Christ, but for his people, yeah, for his kingdom, which is a, a, a actually a really big deal. And I think a lot of bands don't have that sort of understanding of this, of the scriptures or, or maybe they don't care, or maybe they never had anybody teach that, or they've never experienced the life of the church. So they don't know, you know, what they're missing. Yeah. You want to follow up, or is it? Uh, I think uh, I imagine that, I, and I just think about this right now as we're talking about it. I imagine a lot of these bands that we're talking about, you know, that meet like in a youth group or you know, just the, they're young kids growing up in a Christian home or grew up in the church or whatever, and they form a band and stuff. And then, I mean, obviously God's sovereign and saves those he he wants to save and everything. But I imagine a lot of these bands, like I didn't, I hadn't even thought about that. So I'm glad you asked that question, Joy. Like. I bet they get start going on the road. They start touring. They get away from their families. They get away from the church and accountability. And then next thing you know, they're like, you know, abandoning Christ. And well, and, and there's such a built-in culture yeah. already in the entertainment industry. It and it's not a culture where you're going to be discipled or you're going to have any authority. You're going to be taught. You're you're going to be taught an authority, and it's not going to be God. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's that's it's actually difficult. A really great point that you just made. I think that I think that people like the reform folks um, tend to get this, uh, in my view, better than other Christians of other you know um, tribes or whatever you want to call it. The reform people understand this this myth of neutrality much better than than other streams. I think in, in, in certain other streams, there can be the, the notion of, of that there are neutral areas. You know, maybe, maybe the music business is just a neutral area and you can use it for good or you can use it for bad or you can just kind of do your thing. And Christ doesn't have to come into that, that specific area. Mm. The reform folks know that there is no such thing as, as a neutral area. Everything belongs to Christ. Right. And anything not surrendered to Christ of course, is going to be chaos. As you know, Luke, you did yes. a sermon on that. Christ or chaos. The Reformed people get that so well. What happens is that a lot of Christian musicians go out into the music industry and they're basically like, oh, it's a neutral area. 
what they do not understand is that the entertainment world is absolutely under the Lord, under the lordship of, of chaos mm. and in terms of the, from the world's point right. of view. It is actively warring, actively warring against everything that Christ stands for. Yeah. I mean, it is moral anarchy. I mean, it, it, they are, that side is of the belief, much like the sexual revolution of the 60s. It's of the belief of the only reason that we're not happy is because Christianity or other forces want to, you know, it, keep us chained up in this repression of our sexuality. Mm. And it, that's the reason that we don't have freedom. If we had utter freedom, if we could throw the shackles off of all sexuality and and just live a, a, as sexual animals, then that would actually make us really happy. And and they they not only believe that, they praise it. They praise chaos, yeah. right? That, that radical revolution and the whole the the whole industry is 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 governed by that and so i think christians are are naive to think well maybe just because i have the the brand christian band or even christian music industry that that those that those aspects are going to be not at play and that is naivety it is absolute naivety and a misunderstanding mm. I think of scripture yeah. and, and the war at hand. So that's a really good point that was mm. made. No, I appreciate that a ton.